What if I ask you, what is the best way to measure your glucose level? Maybe a few years ago, it's drawing blood from your arm, and now it may be a prick of your finger. But if I tell you now that all those are obsolete, this is a contact lens, maybe similar to one that you and I have, but if you wear this contact lens, this contact lens can measure the glucose level in your tears and be able to send that information to an app in your phone. Imagine that if you are a diabetic patient, you don't have to prick your fingers 10 times a day. Since we are at the topic of medicine, this is not a regular pacemaker. This pacemaker not only connects to the internet, it can sense whether you are having a pending heart attack. If you do, it will automatically call 911 or ambulance. It could save a person's life with this extra few minutes. Self-driving cars, we all know they'll be here. But the question is that whether they are safe. In this example, you have a pedestrian trying to cross the road carelessly, like all of us do. <laughs> a self-driving car is approaching the intersection. But unfortunately, the self-driving car probably cannot see that pedestrian because a van is blocking its sight. A fatal accident could easily happen. But if we can have cameras mounted on top of light poles, the cameras can see that pedestrian and be able to broadcast that information to all the cars, including that self driving cars. That could prevent a fatal accident. You may think I'm the Terminator. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But the contact lens, the self-driving car, the pacemaker, and more and more of our world is going to be connected to the internet. It's going to bring enormous benefit to us and to society. But there's always a but. But there's a cloud overhang these promises. Hacking. All of us know too well about hacking. Last year, half a million pacemakers were recorded because they were subject to hacking. Imagine someone who can remotely control your pacemaker and stop it and demand a ransom. Also last year, Equifax was hacked. 44% of us with our names, addresses, social security numbers were stolen. 2015, Chrysler recorded 1.4 million vehicles because hacker potentially could remotely log on to the cars and stop the engine when you and I are driving on the highway. With all that said, you may not think that I'm the Terminator, but this guy. <laughs> but there's always a but. But fortunately, there's a silver bullet on the horizon. That silver bullet is blockchain. You may have heard about blockchain, and you may think, blockchain? Is that Bitcoin? <laughs> Those crazy currency that sells for $10,000? No. Blockchain, indeed, is the fundamental technology for Bitcoin. But it can do more, much more than Bitcoin. Let me tell you how. This is our current computer architecture. Centralized, massive servers with big databases that contain our information, 
credit card information, medical records, social security numbers. A hacker, if he or she is successful, can hack into those systems like Equifax, be able to steal millions or hundreds of millions of information or records. Blockchain network is quite different. Blockchain network contains of many servers with identical databases. For example, in Bitcoin, there are about 10,000 servers all over the world. Let me use one example to illustrate blockchain, because many people confuse us what blockchain does. This example is easy. Imagine that Mary has to send some money to John, $10, $20. This money, or what we call transaction, is encapsulated in a block. This block is going to be broadcast to all the servers in this blockchain network. Imagine that maybe there are 1,000 servers in this blockchain network. It will be broadcast to all the servers in this blockchain network. There are some specialized servers in this blockchain network called miners. What they do is to mine or to validate this block is valid. The first miner who is able to validate this block is going to, valid, is going to send this validated block to all the servers in this blockchain network to approve. And what does the server do? The server will basically look at whether Mary has enough money to pay John. If over 50% of the servers in this blockchain network approves or agrees that this is a valid transaction, this block or validated block is going to be added to all the databases in this blockchain network. And this transaction is complete. Mary has successfully sent that $10 to John. You may say, this is so clumsy. It takes so much work to send $10 from one person to the other. Right? But that is the trick. What is the trick to prevent hacking? Two things, only two. The first one, it takes a lot of computing power energy to mine or to validate the block. Some estimate that it takes a small country's entire computing power to validate the block last year in Bitcoin. So a hacker or hackers have to spend a lot of money for computing resources and energy. That's the first thing. The second is that even if the hacker can do it, he has to hack into more than 50% of the servers in the blockchain network in order to change or to alternate that block. In the Bitcoin network, it could mean hacking into 5,000 of the servers all over the world. So you may, you may say, why would I care? Why would I even care about this blockchain network? Because blockchain network is still in its infancy. It could support maybe millions of what we call Internet of Things, all those devices. But we have billions of those devices. Imagine that if you can go back to history, to the beginning of Internet, 40, 50 years ago, how much you and I can change the Internet? We are at the stage of the beginning of blockchain technology. Blockchain is still in its infancy. No matter whether you are in defense, manufacturing, high-tech, logistics, medicine, you can advance and apply this technology to your respective industry and change the future. Welcome to the future. <laughs>